Well, 25 basis point was baked in the cake. You know, the Fed Fund's futures rate were over 90% uh, of investors uh, believing the Fed would raise rates. So that's not a surprise. I think we know more or less what the message is going to be, but we're not going to stop till inflation is, is down and inflation is more stubborn than we thought it was going to be. And, um, you know, that sort of thing. That's but, and data dependent, of course, we're data dependent. Which, of course, you know, that, that makes sense. But the problem with data, as we talked before, data is by its nature backward looking. You get a report today, it, if you get a report today, it's for Ju- uh, what happened in June. Uh, so it's already out of date by the time the report comes out. I also think part of the reason for the pause last month was because you had dissension at the Fed. Some people wanted to stop, some people wanted to rate hike 50. And the Fed likes uh, consensus. They don't like, um, uh, you know, opposition around, uh, on the Fed and Powell in particular. Um, so I think pausing, I think they should have paused earlier, but that's, uh, the pause was not unexpected. And Powell, frankly, I don't, you know, I'm not an advocate of the Fed or a defender of Powell, as you know, an apologist for Powell. But I think he made the very big case that they've had the most rapid rate and increase rate of hikes in history from zero to five in basic just over a year is very, very rapid. And it just made sense to pause and see what the effect was. I agree with you. Um, they could have had a couple of months pause, but the problem is, of course, they don't meet in August. So next month is a pause, an automatic pause built in. So... Uh, I think that gives them a little bit of time uh, to see what happens. But the truth is, as, as Powell himself has said, and as Milton Friedman has said 40 years ago, and as we all know, monetary policy works with long and variable lags, but long lags. And so it takes 18 to 24 months before the effect of monetary policy, up or down, really starts to become evident in the economy. And so... Given the rapid rate of hike increases, yeah, you're right. You've got to pause more than one month to see what those impacts are. You know, the headlines in the economy, retail sales or unemployment rate, all look as though the economy is doing reasonably well. But look under the bonnet, or lift the hood, and you see, um, you, you see things aren't quite as rosy. And we've talked about this before. You look at consumers' sales. If if retail sales are moving up by three or four percent last year and and a little bit less this year, that's less than the rate of inflation. So, to point to retail sales and say, "Well, the consumer's doing well," is totally fallacious because it means a consumer is spending the rate. The increase in consumer spending is less than the cost of living is going up which means the consumer is cutting in terms of volume. They're either going to Walmart instead of Neiman Marcus, or they're buying, you know, fewer cereals, or they're doing something, right? They are cutting back. The next thing you see is savings decline. We saw that. Savings have have gone way back to before the COVID level. They were built up during COVID, of course. The next thing that happens, once your savings have gone out, is the credit card balances start moving up. We've seen that starting middle of last year. And now, starting this year, we're seeing credit card defaults. So it's a natural progression. You want to keep spending what your kids want for breakfast, what your wife wants clothing or whatever. You want to keep spending and you do it out of savings. And when savings are gone, you use credit card. When the credit card balances are so high, there's a point when you can't pay them off. So Capital One, which is a credit card company, but sort of most services the lower income range, Capital One and Discover would be at that lower end. They started having the defaults first, you know, last October, November. But if did you look at American Express's um, quarterly? Uh, American Express reported their defaults on American Express, which serves the higher end, their defaults have gone up threefold in the last 12 months. This is, this is quite staggering, quite astonishing. And that's only going to get worse as interest rates stay high for longer. 
And that's the point Peter Bookba, you know, Peter Bookba has made very strongly, very clearly, but I would re-emphasize, you don't need race to go up from here. You just need them to stay where they are for a period of time and more and more people will start getting hurt.